<laughs> All right, we are live. Thank you for waiting, everybody. We're here Sunday night, second episode of the Winds of War Against the Dark Master special preview during the Kickstarter campaign. I can hear myself. That means I am not muted on somewhere. There we go. Uh, we have a special guest at the top of the session joining us in the middle of the screen. Here we got Nick, one of the developers Hi, of the game, who uh, yeah. asked me earlier today, hey, can I hop in? And I was like, of course you can. Uh, <laughs> so he's here to say a few words. And um, if you guys in the chat or even some of the players here, if you have a few questions for him, feel free to ask him. But uh, the floor is yours, Nick. I'm going to go ahead yeah, and so post a link to the Kickstarter right now. Thank you very much for having me and uh, having us literally with the other part of the team, but they're sleeping in Italy. So they, they, <laughs> um, uh, we, we live, it's been like, oh, it's going to be two weeks in, in, in Tuesday, Tuesday, next Tuesday that we're live and, <clears throat> and it's going well. Uh, we, we, uh, reach our, um, founding goal immediately, uh, like few hours immediately like in as few i hours. knew you would yeah 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 we were um we weren't we weren't confident about it we were hoping <laughs> and happen and and seeing those numbers rolling very fast it was a great great uh <laughs> moment um but um you know as all the campaign it's, there's a u curve so uh, we're hitting the, the slow and steady and um uh, so we posting updates and reaching stretch goals, I think the uh, the uh, we have uh, a fiction or adventure coming up. I don't yep. know which. The next. Twitter it's, one yeah. was just unlocked today. The hundred retweets. Yeah, the the the, oh, cool. the hundred retweets. Yes, and um, so we like uh, trying to uh, marketing the, the 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 Kickstarter as much as we can. And it's you know it's it's bringing back some uh, heat to the campaign and, and attention, uh, but you know I, we wanted to come here because you guys are the we were you guys were the first one that we saw playing our game, so it's, it was such a such a great emotion to see uh, you know something you worked so hard uh, that was played by other people, and so we you know Max told me today go visit them. <laughs> and uh, he's our social media manager too. So, uh, and I'm, so as I said, as as uh, Matt said before, I'm Nick. My name is Nick. I live here in New York, even though I'm from Italian, if you can't tell by my accent. Um, and I'm the CEO of Open End Gaming of Open End Games, and also the guy to take care of the layout. So if something is not readable enough, you can blame me. <laughs> um, but I think we did our best to make at least a quick start. Uh, extremely old school, yep. but uh, you know, readable. And uh, so, if anybody in the chat has any question, I will be more than happy to um, answer. Otherwise, I'm gonna you know let you guys start playing and enjoy our game. So either way, it's a win-win for me. Awesome. Yeah, we appreciate you dropping in here, Nick. We've got a couple people here in chat. Fawn, you're in chat. Epicam1981. Do you, either of you have some questions for Nick regarding the campaign or against the Dark Master or uh, any of the players or even comments? Doesn't have to necessarily be a question. Chuck! Chuck's here. Chuck, do you have a question for Nick? <laughs> or judge us on how we role play. What's that? I said, or judge us on how we role play. Yeah, yeah. Judge them on how they role play. <laughs> Yeah, to give the players. Nobody ever asks the players questions. Yeah, any questions? Uh, we were talking before chat, so we kind of discussed some things before we went live. Um, do any of you guys, Wes, Bill, Mike, anybody have questions for Nick? Yeah, I got a quick comment. Go ahead. Nick, I just got to say, the artwork is incredible in this thing. It's yeah, absolutely yeah. awesome. Yes, the artwork. Is, so when. Uh, we um, uh, a couple of years, no, see, a couple of years ago when we started everything. I mean, we've been working on these for a long time, but we came to the realization that we really wanted to launch a Kickstarter a couple of years ago. And um, we, the, one of the first thing we highlighted was that uh, our work has to be centered, because uh, you guys remember, as I was, you know, when we grew up in the nineties. Um, early 2000 when internet was a, internet wasn't that 
you know, present. It was really hard to get the sense of wonder without using, you know, this beautiful artwork that Dungeons and Dragons or, or um, uh, Role Master and all these games from the early 90s had, this beautiful uh, piece of art that like, you know, Elmore, it's, you know, Elmore is always on top of my head. So we really focus a lot on our work and Tom, which we have this enormous luck having in our team. He's our art director and our main artist. And he was my he was my first master, one of my first master. And our character were all hand drawn by him. So we used to have our character sheet with our character hand drawn by like a real artist. So it was, it was super cool. But yeah, thank you, thank you very much for pointing that out. We really pay a lot of attention into it. Yeah, he's going on a crawl. That's well, honestly that's been. One of the things I've heard the most is like the art is killer. The art is amazing. The art is they nailed it on the art. So yeah, yeah, it's very it's it's uh, hits the spot. Mm -hmm. You know that you thinking about um, some this kind of re retro game, and uh, you think of this type of artwork, black and white, because at the time all the all the handbook were black and white. Yep. Uh, very very clean layout. Uh, everything has to be first first of all everything has to you you have to be able to read uh, whatever you what is on the page you know no weird things in the background nothing distracting clean we went for a clean layout which is directed what directed by tom as well the layout and i executed and um so it's uh you know we really we know that the, dev, the devil is in detail and we try to work that out the best we can. Hey, uh, Nick, I have a question for you. Yeah. What, what would you say your biggest inspirations are for this game system when you look back at the, the prior games that you'd played or experienced? Uh, well, definitely um, Role Master and Murp has played a huge um, role. In, it's a, 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 we always say that um, our game is a love letter to those games, especially Merp. So those are the main source of inspiration. I heard you say something like that before. Maybe you'd already talked about this, and then uh, so I'm sorry if I had you repeat it. But no, 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 no problem. Absolutely. What about for the um, look? I know for the look, you guys have some inspirations I could throw out there. Um, we've got we've got the Bakshi uh, yeah, Lord of exactly. the Rings films is a big yes. inspiration. If yes. Oak over there moves his head aside, that that picture of the Dark Master. That's ooh, that's really similar. If anybody's seen the old Disney uh, Black Cauldron Beautiful. movie, that's going to be very, very familiar to you. So those are yes. a couple of inspirations that I, I know of. Yes. That I can and also, see. we have, um, you know, all the um, literature from from the fantasy literature, of course, Lord of the Rings, uh, Shannara, uh, the third books, third book series, even though, you know, in, in its not name because you know Ter Brooks is not our main source of inspiration, but he was. was able to create a certain sense of one, especially when we were a kid. You know, it's a it's a it's very good when you're a kid. To, it's a good introduction to the fantasy. Not if you start with Lord of the Rings, it's like this huge brick that can kill someone, and then you get you know Shannara is a little bit more affordable in terms of time and effort in the reading but we have yeah those are the main source of inspiration and also we ha we have a lot of inspiration from metal music not me because yeah, I'm, not the, a big, I'm not i'm not i'm the one i'm the, the black I'm the sheep black everybody sheep else here. is big into metal uh but everybody else is um really big into metal i tried all my best friends all like metal i'm the only one that like rock punk rock and classical music so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm different but I'm the one that thinks the most so I like to <laughs> you know um, just stay in the background and they, they like they, they made the playlist for, that is on our website yeah the playlist is fantastic check it out yeah the playlist uh, they say so I, 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 I... it's good <laughs> Oak you can back it up you've listened to it it's, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I did. I did. I try Eastern. I try. I, I'm, oh, I don't okay. have any prejudice, uh, any, any, any <laughs> against metal. I just, um, it's just not your forte. It's not, it's not my cup of tea. 
We got a couple questions chat. They're somewhat similar. So I'm going to read them both and then you can you can dive into it. So Chuck, who runs the Defenders of Cobalt, he wants to run your game over on his channel early next year. And he asked, uh, here's a question. Someone coming new to the mechanics of Against the Dark Master, what's some advice you'd give them to help them wrap their heads around the mechanics of the game? So that's the first question. The other question that came in uh, was from Fawn Sater, and it's also similar. Do you have any advice I can give a and d player on the type of gameplay Against the Dark Master has uh, verse versus what they might be used to so it's kind of like how do you let, let's sum it up and how how can you wrap your head around getting into this game because it is very different than D&D. it's different than swyhander it's different than pathfinder yeah. if you've not played merp or rollmaster it is a very 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 different game and system yes yes um so i mean of course that i would suggest that the, the quick start is a great start right now before the, the rules are coming out because the the, the rules are explained in a very um a clear way uh, there's no fluff around it and um it's a great way to get straight to the point um well the first suggestion i would give is to come with an open mind because yeah. uh if you if you um never played a role-playing game before it can be you know hard to get into but i think that's applied to any game in the role-playing game world because it's for someone that never played it it's always very hard to understand what's going on. So open mind is the first, it's necessary. Second, uh, it's to understand that you only need two dice <laughs> instead of a bag of dice. Uh, and um, that um, you need to um, pay very much attention in the beginning uh, uh, what are the, um, the, car the character creation gives you a very good picture of how the game is going to go because uh, when you create your character and you see all the mod mod modifier you have around your character sheet, um, and that's is gonna be just the number you add to the role that you, that you take, and you compare to the tables. I'm already getting complicated. <laughs> but uh... What's the elevator pitch? <laughs> the elevator pitch is it's not like what you're used to, um, but go into, I'd say go into it with an open mind. Yeah, go with an open mind. Uh, you only need two dice. Uh, which I think is actually a strength in the game because everything comes down to roll a die and add and add the, and add to it the modifier you have and the specific thing you want to do, and then compare to the table, of course. But um, it's 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 less complicated than you think once you get used to it. I agree. So the beginning can be a little bit crunchy, which is um, <laughs> the crunch is the hard part to uh, swallow in the beginning. But once you get into the mechanics even after I, I would say four or five sessions um three four sessions um you get a little bit more used to it and the game flows really easily because it's really um a lot it's delegated to the, to the uh, game master which you know tells you what to do what to you know but you need to know how to move around in the game so you need to learn your rules but there, there are a lot but uh, you can, you know, learn it as you go. So, I and think, go ahead. I would say um, for a D&D &D group, um, from what you guys, the picture you painted when we did our last interview of the game and and how it's supposed to feel and the tone of it, it is high fantasy. So if you're coming from a D&D &D or Pathfinder, this is high fantasy. It's about heroes. It's about heroes yeah. and it's about fighting a big epic battle. Like you are and, taking on an unstoppable force. Exactly. So you could sell it to your D&D &D group. It is very similar in, in, in that high fantasy tone of D&D, &D, uh, but it's it's going to be the mechanics that are different. Yeah, Jen, I can think you, I'm uh, more I'm gonna, more Can you mute too. yourself there, Gian? Like, uh, excuse me? me? Yeah. Sorry, I could hear you zipping through your suitcase. <laughs> um, <laughs> a bag of manga. A oh, he's, he's at the, <laughs> sorry, he's at the comfort he's at the comfort suites here, so uh, <laughs> uh so uh, sorry, say, so yeah. Oh man. Sorry, I would add Nick. What you I would add to what you say, Matt, that um of what you said, it's hundred percent um I agree hundred percent what you said. Also I would say that <laughs> if you've if you've missing in your in your uh, sessions, um, that that hero feeling that you might want from watching movies, reading books, like that there is one specific moment in a battle that everything can change, you can get it from this game. Yeah, like you will build so many 
epic memories by playing this game that is going to be hard uh, to change to a more, um, I would say, to a more um, dull system. Because that's what my experience. When I started playing Rome Master, I was coming from a, a, a the 3 and 3.5 Dungeons and & Dragons. And I always complain that I, I, I wanted to do something heroic, as you said. And this game gives you the chance because you can go, well, you have to ma manage your uh, attack bonus and save something in the, the defense when you, when you, you know, there's a, there's a lot of strategy into the game, into the battle system. And uh, managing your resource is going to be key in order to be successful in your company. I, so, I would agree uh, that it was it, that it would be, that is memorable though because it's been nine months since we've played it and it took a little while but between these guys we started they started piecing together everything that happened that once they all kind of like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah and it was memorable it stuck with them nine months later and we played a hell of a lot of games in those nine yeah, months. Listen, it's something <laughs> that I always That's find so very very appealing in these type of games. It's uh, how heroic something can be and this is coming from a guy and if Tomas was here he can he can vouch for me but i got i i got i died so many times <laughs> playing this type of games but it's still it's heroic you you die as a hero you yeah. don't die as a fool you die as a hero there you because go. there you really there's a sales pitch to your D, D groups and your groups to get them indoctrinated if you want to be a yeah, hero, think about it. But you want I that mean, danger of like, uh, like a Zweihand or another game where there is the chance to die. This, this is it. Yeah, I mean, you're not dying because your your H, you know, that your health is getting. I mean, you can die for that too, but you can die because somebody chops your head, and that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, it does. A, a hobgoblin. I mean, a goblin or 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 orcs. Uh, that you know the fussy group of orcs that you find on your journey even when you are the highest levels exactly uh, they can kill you so yeah you they get lucky with a roll uh, and they can, they can decapitate count. you and instantly kill you it's just the name of the game Each but it can go the same count. way for the PCs yeah and I think that Max did a great job into um, uh, uh, casting this constant presence of the Dark Master which, by the way, in the full rules, you're gonna be able to create your own Dark Master. So, uh, which, oh, I'm so excited! For that. I know, I'm so I know. excited Listen, for that. That's I'm like, not gonna spoil anything. That, I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I'm working expected. on the layout already, and I'm that part. So I'm reading everything he wrote. I mean, I read it before, but by I'm, I'm, he did such a job. You guys, you can do whatever you want. You can create any, any, um, you know, evil. Uh, presence uh, lurking in the background and, and following everything you do and and the way the dark master works not the way that works more but one of the ways that it, the presence is shown that as mu as more powerful you become more attention you're gonna draw so you know there's always that that sense of corruption a sense of yeah uh, the presence is there so it's a Morgan Mel, oh. thank you for the follow. And I also want to say Epicam81 says uh, that they just backed the Kickstarter and they can't wait to see it. Oh my God. Thank you very much. Good big shout out to them. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank I have that. a question for Nick too here since yes. we're here. Um, I'm actually interested in really playing some of the uh, untraditional uh, characters like the trolls and the giant that was the just giant. released in the Kickstarter. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm interested, how many background options are these? Like how detailed can we specify and branch um, out different all these different characters it's going to be of course more than when you see in the kick on the on the mm -hmm. start uh the thing about the background option is that uh they can they're super fun yeah they're very easy uh it's the easy way to break a game <laughs> that's so for if, sure if you put too many <laughs> if you um overflow the the handbook with mm -hmm. so many background option uh, it's easy to make um, a game very broken. Uh, so we really um, paying a lot of attention uh, to which one to put in. Of course, uh, the, 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 the you know special, the, the, not special, but unusual um, races, uh, kins actually, that's how we call uh -huh. them. Are the unusual kins um, are going to be, we actually just unlocked one, which is the fur bog. Which is um, um, like the the son of the giants. Oh, nice! Uh, the, um, 
it's actually very interesting. We 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 have any of course worked it out, but we were um, brainstorming maybe to add more things to it, and um, they're gonna be maybe something um, linked to your passions and and and. So there's, you know, each keen is going to be uh, not anonymous. So we, the background option are going to help you even make it more personal, but you already start with something extremely unique. Not Excellent. unique, but Excellent. something something that stands out. Yeah, and, right. uh, helps you um, uh, put yourself into the character and, and, and um, fall in love with your own character. And... Um, is going to help you picture in your mind what you what you're playing. So um, Max did a great job with the help of Tom and some of my help. But they're never going to recognize it. Okay, <laughs> um, that um, each keen is going to be um, something that is not because how many times it happens that you go through a handbook and you see so many anonymous, not attractive keens. Yes, never. Uh, yeah. we, we we put that in consideration. And we just didn't try to fill the gaps with with fluff. Everything it's you know um, calculated and 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 put in the handbook because it makes sense. So um, you can imagine my happiness every time the time maybe we should cut this off, change this, and I'm on the guy that is in charge of the layout. So every time the time to come take something off, everything comes off. Uh, the layout and everything it's off and have you to curse them you know. <laughs> but uh, this is you know when you work with artists or genius as they call themselves <laughs> um well thank you i'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well hey, listen wes you part of the project you guys are part of this project now so <laughs> That's um, awesome. thank you. wes it's actually big shout out to wes because he oh made yeah that wonderful <coughs> he made this world 20 character sheet that we're using yeah, it's, and it's is incredible. making my life a hell of a lot easier yeah, uh, Wes, you should ask for money from Matt. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm just throwing out yeah, here, yeah, guys. A yeah. <laughs> uh, couple questions in chat. Fonsader asked, is there any uh, plans to release a phone PDF of the book or will it be available to Kickstarter people? Um, I'm sorry, what I didn't understand. Oh, what is what a phone is PDF. PDF. Like, um, Swy Hander, Castle oh, Crusades, Doug Meyer, they just released... Um, so it, we, it's in discussion because okay. we saw the heat, the, the, the heat that this kind of project got mm-hmm. dangerous, uh, I, would, I should rather say. And it's definitely in consideration. Um, the PDF, of course, is going to be a um, PDF with all bookmarks and it's going to be very easy. When to you're chasing greatness, just remember. Jen? Mm-hmm. It's not about me. I muted him. <laughs> Stop chasing greatness and yeah, show. chasing greatness. I don't know what's going on there. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I was saying, um, yeah, it's in it's in, it's in the talks. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, definitely that um, you know the PDF. The PDF is going to be released. And you guys made it fully copy. linkable, searchable. Yeah, everything is going to be linkable. So I mean, we are all tech, you know, savvy, and we all. In, enjoy our game from Dark to RPG, and we know the the pain of having a bad PDF. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another question doesn't work in the PDF. You can blame me. This time. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, another question for Fawn. I think we touched, we did touch on this in the Q and A. We don't have to get into too too much, but he asked, is there a fully developed setting in the book, or is it more of a sandbox homebrew idea for the game? Uh, so um, we uh, like uh, we don't like when the setting has that that these. Uh, important presence in the game, so we make uh, the setting uh, more implied. Yeah, you can imply the settings uh, for you know the, the 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 quick description we give, but um, there's not gonna be a setting you know specific for the game. It's gonna be a high fantasy setting. It's what you have in mind when you think of high fantasy. Is what you have in mind when you read the the blurb on the back of the book when we you know. Um, Black Cauldron and Lord of the Rings and that type of high fantasy uh, and um, so the, the, that's the answer the, the, the setting is going to be implied but that doesn't mean that in the future we won't release um, a setting a setting uh, book so make it successful book. let's support this game support the Kickstarter so that yeah, we do see yeah, an yeah. official setting book down the road yeah we, we, you know you never know I mean there's so many setting book right now you really can 
apply whatever you want whenever you want and uh, so we didn't make us a priority because i think everybody is able to the first thing we did when we got a game the, was tweak the setting so yeah uh, every time we get a new game so awesome. that's it thank you thank you for the question guys. yes awesome. thank you for the questions people in chat very much appreciated is there any other questions either in chat or from the players No, well, there's Chat not going going. Uh, there's always a delay. So I'll give them a moment here. It's like a 15 second delay between what we're saying, and what they see. Why is GN so epic? Oh, GN. Why, why is he at a comfort suite? <laughs> I don't know if it's been asked already or not. Is there going to be an option for a cover for just the original? Just the black and white. That's what oh. you mean, an alternative cover? For the yeah, book, yeah. it was yeah. it was it was hinted at in our in our our last uh, yeah in the Q and A. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what is he allowed to say? So like, am I going to get in trouble tomorrow from Max and Tom? Uh, well, they they are far away from here, so what's the worst can happen? I so we we of course we talk about it because I think that uh, a beautiful black and white um, cover would be I think. I would prefer, uh, personally, like as a personal taste. I like uh, uh, the, like something black and white with like a big picture in the front. Uh, but uh, right now, you know, it's uh, it's it's we we explored it uh, and we have the quotes, <laughs> but uh, you know we need to we need a certain um, amount of. Um, income from kickstarter in order to do it because let me, ask, it, let me ask you this how about the font just make the font black and white like it is on the screen right now or behind uh behind oak there <laughs> oh i mean uh you know uh <laughs> the image i have should be the cover that's awesome no listen you look so um high fantasy right now that, <laughs> that it's uh it's a it's a it's, it's unreal <laughs> and, the, and you know the horn looks good on you. Let me get my horn. Go with the, yeah, yeah, your antlers really suit you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we definitely consider it. Um, All right. But as of right now, we maybe you, you know we reach a certain amount of money, we add it as a stretch goal. No, I will but, buy it if it happens. But um, I'll, I'll make it only, regardless, aren't you? I'll make it only for you. <laughs> Just for you, Oak. All right. Well, put me on that short list too, and. Uh... No, it's mine only. Shut up. <laughs> and one of those You're wooden GM screens. On one of those wooden GM screens too, with the Dark Master on there. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I think that or the, the black the, T-shirts the like this would be awesome too. Oh, there was talk on Twitter, so you won't get in trouble over this. There was talk on Twitter about the black yeah, T-shirts, we, we, and we, Max we, showed yeah. one on yeah, Twitter. We, maybe, maybe not on with, on the Post with, Kickstarter and the Baker Kick. With this guy on it, all black, yeah. with just that on it. It depends. It all depends how we are on the closing day. But there are talks about it. Um, Matt already benefited one of uh, our uh, gifts, so maybe um, maybe sh there are talk of about the shirt. The shirts are hot. People like the shirts. So uh, against the Dark Master dice bag, very very nice gift from you guys. Thank you so much. No this problem. is my now now my Sweet. my gift bag or my dice bag that I use. I only need two dice. Actually, you play. Oh, well, 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 all the games I play. <laughs> but yes, I mean, more than one set of dice. we we explore that avenue as well. So um, don't worry. Maybe you know, maybe Oak, you're gonna be happy at the end of the campaign, and uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But there there are we talking. There are we talking. We, we explore. It. We're not in the dark about it. So <laughs> awesome. that's the important thing. But if I don't know if there's any other question, I don't want to hold you guys too long. And uh, yes, if I'm quick, I know you were fixing your yeah, Mike. Phone. Do you have a question? Are you just are you holding up your hand or are you just fixing your oh? Well, I was actually, I, I, um, you have a question. Well, I have a specific question. Yeah, uh, go ahead. RR, does that stand for range and reload? Um, our, our resistance roll, uh, that's oh, the resistance first, roll. Okay, good. Uh, uh, the first thing comes to mind, you really caught me off guard. Sorry. Uh, well, that, uh, we, we went way down in the weeds, so I'm just, uh, 
I'm, 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 so, I'm still learning the game mechanics. By what? the way, how do you how did did we play the way you thought we were going to play with the rules? Did it yeah. seem different to you, or uh, uh, did you, I mean, it's, it's a hard. Did you notice hard, anything that we're kind of getting wrong, or that you want to kind of like uh, correct our path on? I don't think so. I think that um, you guys interpreted the the rules very well. On top of my head, I can't think of any. Actually, we were all like very pleased okay. for how okay. that unfolded. Um, but um, I can't think of anything. I think everything went. Uh, we were very, very happy. I have to tell you that. I remember the day after we were watching the video, and uh, we were like a little bit off time. Where I mean, you know, because they're in Italy, so they watch before me, after me. I remember what I remember, like saying something and said, "Yeah, I noticed it too." It was like, "Oh my god!" It was the first time we saw our work given to someone and, and make this beautiful thing. It's just, uh, just so, it was so, I couldn't, you know, take my uh, eyes off the screen and listen to you guys and playing and enjoying the game. Okay, do, you, do you imagine that we're, <laughs> we didn't are, are, mess it up are, too bad? Are, are you thinking that uh, most of the games will be played like uh, pen and paper or online? Do you, do you have a thought about where it's going to happen? Um, I'm uh, I'm sorry. You asked me what do you guys play or what we. What, no, when you when you think about your game, do you think it mostly being played at a kitchen table or do you think of kitchen it? Table. Be, okay. Kitchen table, dirty kitchen table that your <laughs> your character should get all you know. They have to you have to reprint them every. I reprint right. them every every level. So, but, uh, that's what I picture. You know, uh, grease on the on the character sheet, and we are Italian, so we have food all the time on the table. Cheeto dust. Uh, Pizza grease, <laughs> grease everywhere. But yeah, the we, we they have good food, Matt. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and, and good Nick, coffee Nick's, too. Nick's here. He's in North America. He knows. No, no, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Ah, uh, you guys get that bad, but it's good. It's good. It's good. I mean, you you have to know where to eat in Italy too. There's there's crappy places there too. So, <laughs> um, but uh, we mostly mostly think the game <clears throat> has pen and paper, but um. The, I think helps the fact that the game uh, rules are so modernized uh, compared to the past that I think it's going to be very seamless to integrate it into our online system. However, you know, tables are tables and tables come in paper. Right. So, well, uh, um, a, a big part for, for me anyways, uh, we, I was lucky to have Wes, I think, make this character sheet. Yes. That helps. So <laughs> I, I was give very him. lucky to have Wes yeah. make this character sheet. <laughs> Because I, I think a good character sheet can help you through a lot of the rules. And, yeah, uh, I'm, oh, so. I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100%. The character sheet is like is like a key yeah. that you use. Yeah, it's like you got to leverage the computer power to do all that for you. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes it, it, it really um, uh, eliminates the, the boring part of the crunch. Keeps the game crunchy, but it eliminates the hard, boring part of the crunch. Streamlines it. Yeah. Yeah, keeps uh, keeps it flowing. I agree. Fun. Props, and, props, uh, Wes, on this because this was very. Yeah, good. Wes, you're getting you. so much pressure. I know it better be <laughs> hey, good when I'm he done. He deserves it. He does. You've seen it. You, <laughs> yeah. You've seen it in action. No, it's in bad. So uh, we it's were like insane. The amount of work you put <laughs> we, like the, we like the character shoot more than our game. Or <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I'd say that. Okay. There you go, Wes but, is the um, shoot master. <laughs> but um, definitely, I think that um, since World 20 is one of the main platform use and it's free, uh, I mean, you can pay for it if you want, but uh, having a good character sheet in that specific platform would definitely make us more technological in terms of, you know, putting the game online. So uh, definitely, um, you know, we... we all we can do, we can put it, to put it on, 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 you know, in a technological aspect into the game. But we'll do because we, as I said, we all tech savvy, so we, we understand the convenience of having it. I mean, we're not stuck in the past. And oh. uh, listen, we play between us on Roll Twenty as well. Nice. So, uh, oh, cool. I mean, uh, we play live, but I mean, in New York, they're in Italy, and Max actually lives like ten hours from where we. Paolo and Tom are so we play online on road play. Well, you gotta invite invite Matt to one of your games so he gets to play for once. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, 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 yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, the other con, other con. I am sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, the English is not perfect yet. But
but uh, it's gonna there's gonna have a table we're gonna have a table oh so if uh, any of you guys want to join in and uh, roll 20 i'm gonna be the master all right so, and you do a little what lake? is that i'll just play i'll play dumb and i'll just but well, you know it's, 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 it's willow lake so you already know it <laughs> shoot me the details afterwards <laughs> and i'll uh, i'll see if i can get in on it though i yeah, would like to play it absolutely 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 now it's gonna be a little pressure on me uh, Let me ask you if I can get banned on this channel here. Are, are y'all talking to anybody on Fantasy Grounds as well? Um, we <laughs> talk to Fantasy Grounds. No, listen, I'm going to be honest with you because um, we uh, had someone ask us about Fantasy Ground and we got in touch with Fantasy Ground and they were very kind enough to answer us right immediately. And uh, I think uh, since a very, it's a very popular um, platform as well, um, they really wait until you succeed before uh, you know come starting an agreement with you rightfully so because if any kickstarter that starts ask them immediately collaborate to collaborate with them they would not have you know they would have so much work to do that and some of the kickstarter wouldn't even you know be funded or you know follow through so uh we got in touch and uh, uh it's in the talks so uh right now well, our main goal is to give a beautiful, uh, what is good, perfect for us product. And uh, we're going to try to integrate everything as soon as we can in terms of Roll20 or any other uh, virtual tabletop available. Whatever we can do, we will do it. And we want to make this game a platform in which create more um material and, and content so everybody can enjoy this game in the long term and having these tools of course it's the best thing possible because you don't even have to leave your house they live two blocks away they told me who was lived two blocks away matt and bill i think bill. Live right close, and, yep. and they're still playing online so there's not i mean it's it, it's it can be under, understated how they don't like each other <laughs> uh, you're the voice of the truth I uh, might not get invited back there uh, Jen yeah. <laughs> but um, we you know we, we want to try to make the, the, the best possible I know that sounds like a, like a salesman from Apple uh, but uh, we really you know, there's nothing else we can do that make it as, as comfortable as possible for everybody to enjoy the game well, when you got super fans like Wes making the kick-ass character sheets that he is, uh, it makes yeah, it easy. Yeah, just to put more pressure on him. Thanks. Do you guys, uh, so you use Roll20, are you using his sheet now? Do I don't you, think it's out there. Oh, you didn't share with them? Oh, Wes. I didn't know they were doing that. Wes. <laughs> they need to wait for the new one. <laughs> well, no, there's a new version you're working on, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, but wow. I mean, just, you know, one once we... Um, uh, have uh, we have all the rules written down but what we have to you know it'll be you know. nice to see all the rules to get the character. yeah no exactly i wouldn't <laughs> listen i would never ask you to work on a, on, on a, something no. that compiles and it relies on each other on each uh you know formula so much that you you change something and i started to work on the excel file to make a, like a like a like a among us kind of mm -hmm. a character sheet and they were keep changing the freaking rules, and like you know, I was like, all the scripts got screwed up. Everything else was said, you know what, guys, let's use better. And that's the thing with Roll Twenty Two is once you publish it there and people enter numbers into it, you're bound by that. You have to either keep using them or enable options for them to change on the fly. Exactly. If you change so I mean, so. once we have the full rules, yeah, uh, written, I mean, uh, nice and on a layout. Of course, uh, if you uh, willing, we, you know, we can even we got it. Uh, you can we can get in touch. You can get in touch with Max, yep. and he can maybe if you know having the word of the creator. Sound, I sound like a priest here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking to the creator, uh, he's definitely gonna you know help you. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, understand better maybe uh, how to build a perfect character sheet, and uh, awesome. Uh, it would be awesome for us. So. Uh, this is this is be, be almost an hour that we. Chatting. Uh, hey, you can crash this party anytime. I don't mind. Uh, no, this no, is no, cool. no. This, just, this I'm impromptu. Sorry for you guys. I'm holding. Oh you. no! It just means we play it next week. Yeah, we're, 
yeah, we'll just get to play it some more. And this and public Q and A is great. And you get to actually, you've got first time you guys have been able to interact with the players also. So I think it's neat. Yeah, that. yeah. This These is guys awesome. who also yeah, played your cool. game for the you know the first people yeah, to you stream guys, your game, you they're here as well. The, our first apostles. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> And they all are on cam now, except for GN. They're all on cam, so you get to see well, them I was. that first uh, yeah. that first session. So some men are too beautiful that you can't look upon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you cannot look upon my beauty. All right, we'll ask the chat one more time here. We'll give it uh, 15, 20 more seconds. Any questions in chat? Otherwise, we'll move on to the game. We'll play a, sh a shorter session of Against the Dark Mass tonight, which is okay, um, because this this was awesome. This is a uh, Get some more awareness for this very, very cool game. A very good book. You, you got a backer out of it. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this, is, this is great. This is uh, Epicam awesome. 1921. Thank you so much. Well, if he's right, you're right here, you might as well just grab a character sheet and play with us. Hey, I'm not prepared for that. Yeah. Come on now. Let's not be crazy. <laughs> don't, don't do that to I'm, me. I'm pretty well, sure door, that there's a, there's a druid out there that's not being played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, but there's some guy who's got to he quickly can play the uh, do an overlay. Blame it on your overlays. Come on. Uh, uh, my my kids is about to wake up. It's eleven, so usually oh. they wake up at eleven this time because they're looking for the dance song. Uh, All right, fair enough. I'm already given a lot of time from them. <laughs> I, I heard the kid, little kid, running around before officers looking for me. Uh oh, so, uh, no, I know all about that. <laughs> um, you know, right? Yeah, you guys have kids? I yeah. Think. Oh yeah, yeah. Most Ten. Do. yeah, three, three daughters. All right, all right, all right. So I'm actually behind. <laughs> if, two. if if we were single, we'd be out at a club somewhere. <laughs> oh right? yeah. Then what's my problem? <laughs> You're too busy making characters. Yeah, <laughs> apparently I need to get out of here. Hi <laughs> right, guys, was no. awesome. thank you good, very much. You. Yes, me. thank you so much, Nick, for dropping in and joining us. You're welcome and, here anytime. Uh, um, yeah, we're gonna keep in touch, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Nick, thank you for the great game too. We appreciate it. Oh, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you, Nick. Much, I'm really humble. Thank you very much. Thank Before you. the Pretty campaign wraps up, we're gonna chat and we'll get uh, the group of you guys on here again, and we'll do one last uh, interview and we'll let the community know, and we'll, we'll do one big push for you guys before the campaign's over. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy yep. the game and uh, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Thanks, Nick. Bye, Thank guys. You. Oh, thank you so much for gifting some subs to people. Wow. All right. So, again, start master. I got to fix my overlay because people who are looking at this are going, those aren't the right names if they know who the players are. So I'm going to work on my overlay while you guys introduce yourselves and we'll do a recap of what happened last week. So introduce yourself, who you are, if you've got anything going on, and the character you're playing. I'm going to start with, it's out of order. Uh, the names, the, the, the faces are there, but the names are all different. Oh, my God. Wes, no. Um... Sorry, Bill. I messed it all up. It's all good. Um, Bill, Bill, you're the you're the top you're the top dog there. So, is there anything you want to plug? If not, let us know about Grendel, who you're playing. Nothing to plug. I'm uh, I'm playing Gandril Windblade. I'm a elf that lives just outside of the town where this uh, setting is going. I'm a ageless uh, elf who is acquainted to Nevin, who we just found in the cellar at the end of our last session. And uh, yeah, thanks to Gen, I th believe he is still hogtied. Uh, but we are in the process of taking him out of there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm most... It says warrior on my character sheet, but I am more of a archer than anything else. I thought you were going to say artiste. <laughs> I'm more of an artiste than anything else. Ruiner of maps. Yep, that is accurate. All right, thank you, Bill. Oak, you are next. Go ahead, plug what you got going on and let us know about Athelstain. Okay, I've uh, got some Twitch stuff going on here and there when everybody plays. Twitch TV slash Uriance, U-R-A-E-N-C-E. Mostly RPG stuff, but some PC games as well, especially when the, some new stuff like Diablo comes out, Diablo 4 comes out. Yeah. Um, playing Athelstain, <laughs> uh, the black. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> had some issues with his family. He thought he'd be a better leader than his older brother and kind of got kicked out of his uh, family and the kingdom. Went to another area to learn some humility and balance and uh, kind of back on the right path. But that's why he wears black because of his uh, being banished. And he has a, a thing for more name, but it's not really uh, reciprocated. <laughs> yes. Mike, a.k.a. Madoc. Yes, so uh, I am playing Nadok, 
the Cunning. He's the son of Rocknav the Bold, son of Halnar the Sullen of Clan Frostforge. Madoc has come down from the mountains to meet and make allies of the men nearby to rally and build forces against uh, the Dark Master and other foes. Uh, he is wise beyond his years, meticulous in his manner, uh, but a bit of a hoarder and uh, not particularly um, uh, well-tempered and uh, tends to maybe not say things in the most polite of ways. Oh, and he has an overstuffed backpack with lots of useful stuff in it. Which you thought was full of severed heads, but that was a different game. No, that's right. So, <laughs> well, but but then again, we still have a few sessions left. So that's possible. right. That's right. Well, we're gonna. Have, I thought there was gonna be we're gonna have one, maybe two left. But uh, you know, Nick, he's welcome here anytime. That was awesome to have a little impromptu Q and A with one of the developers of the game. Jen, what do you got going on? And uh, who is Mister Tobald? <laughs> what I got going on is I'm in the company in Sweden. <laughs> That's how dedicated I am to play. Um, Tobal um, grew up as kind of like a prankster. He was, was kind of like the bad kid. He's a halfling. Um, he kind of straightened out um, later on in his years and became the under sheriff under his father, who is a sheriff in, I believe, Grassy Hill. So he received a letter from Mirabella, you know, his dearest, dearest cousin, about her sheep being stolen and her um, husband, her beloved, going off to uh, look for him. And he came to help and discovered that his poor cousin-in-law had died. So him and his pet raffles are trying to get to the bottom of this. And he's been granted the role of warden with the rest of these guys. Mm -hmm. Now, he did, not st he did not stuff a rag into Nevin's mouth either. <laughs> You just put the piece of leather back in there, the gag. You put the gag back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did not. Just to be clear. All right. <laughs> Last but not least, we got Wes, who, if we haven't uh, pumped up enough, has made this amazing <laughs> character sheet that we're using that you could see down in the display there. Uh, Wes, what do you have going on, and who is Mornine? This is uh, the first well, time we've my... also seen Wes, straight into I know, right? I got a camera. Had him on right? camera. Everybody take screenshot. Yeah. So first time, last time, I don't know. Uh, I've been working on a character sheet here and there. I work on another character sheet here and there. That's a little hobby that I picked up. But I'm playing uh, Mornine. She is a illegitimate daughter of a nobleman from the city of White Walls. And uh, she was raised and became an apprentice to uh, Nevin, who was recently found. And I think that is uh, going to be a little bit of a shock for her tonight. Um, yeah. She, yeah. uh she kind of fancies herself as a, I'm better than everybody. I can take care of myself. And I think, I think that might be coming to an end. <laughs> All right. So we've hinted at some of the events that took place last week. Why don't we go ahead and do a rundown from the top? What happened? What did you see? What did you encounter? Uh, we picked up right where we left off where you had the, the troll from the previous session. And we went from there. So go ahead and fill us in. I'll, I'll give you a hint that you saw something on the other side of the lake. That's kind of like the catalyst of what started things. And then you made your way back to to Willow Lake itself. The town, Willow Lake. Them red caps. Yeah. Yeah. You saw some red cap scouts on the other side of the... Uh... Four or five red cap goblins. Yep. Uh, we tried to round everybody up in the small villages to get them back towards town. Yep. For safety. Uh, we knew that the, was it the Pikes and, and the some bear other clan. clan and the bear clan had had a wedding to get broke up by some red caps mm -hmm. just two nights prior. Yeah. We got everybody back to town, found that the, uh, Thane had given control to some mercenaries while he is ill. Yes. We Harkon and his mercenaries. Now we kind of had to force the situation to get him to come out. Granted us our warden titles and got some information after that we got some information from the kitchen help that something's going on who then let us into the thane's bedroom through an unlocked window and lit lantern or candle to let us know yeah who we then found out is worshiping the dark master yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you saw some kind of freaky evil altar down there 
in that secret chamber to the Dark yeah, Master. Nevin, and, when it, Nevin was the captive? Yes, Nevin, the uh, who was a wizard. The, the town of Willow Lake is not aware that he's a wizard. Uh, and he was found chained up... Um, in the in this secret chamber uh tobald found him and asked him <laughs> you didn't even ask him who he was you just asked like hey no. wh- what's going on here or something like that are you okay or something <laughs> like that and then you put the gag back in his mouth and proceed to go back outside <laughs> and tell everybody i had to get some people to help you're like hey there's some guy the chained up down there i left him and uh yeah you described the book to the others that it was nevin and there's a uh, a couple of people in your party who have very strong ties and bonds to Nevin, so they hopped up in there and made their way down there. And we ended the session with them uh, going down there and uh, discovering Nevin chained up. Nevin the wizard. And uh, you guys didn't really ask him any questions. You asked him one question, and that was it. You're just like, oh, okay, and he threw the gag back on. This, this is a Tobald, not the others. So we're going to pick up with, who, it was Athelstane, Mornine, and I want to say Madoc went down there, but Gandrel... I, I went down yeah. there. Oh, okay. Athelstan stayed yeah, outside man. because his armor's too heavy. He would have made noise going in the window. So Gandril, Madoc, and Mornine went down there. Is that correct, Ben? Athelstan and Tobold are outside. Yep. I believe the last the thing we did was unlock uh, Nevin. Yeah, we've got the book. Right. Yeah, that was your, your big thing. Yeah, I think book. we left off that they had gotten just to him and we're pulling the gag off and that's where we stopped. Right. So, yeah, you guys get down there. You counter those things. You go past the... There's a shrine and you get into nevin's cell there's a set of iron manacles that are set into the wall and there's a terrible smell in this chamber and uh, there's a half unconscious old man dangling from the uh the manacles and his mouth is gagged with a strap of leather and his body is covered in wounds um he is immediately familiar to you mornine as nevin and he's just lying there moaning I believe we had just unlocked him as well. The key was on the... Uh... Yes, the key was hanging in there. So you freed him and he's just kind of like a, a mass that's just fallen to the ground. He's heavily, heavily injured and barely conscious. Madoc Mornine, what do you say we talk to him when we get him out of there? Um, Madoc, help me carry him out of here. And uh, Mornine, is there anything you can do to keep us quiet? Wait, friend. Uh, where is where is the... Uh... Oh. What's the uh, master's name called? The uh, or the guy, the the thing. Wolfric. Is he not down here? Uh, no, he uh, <laughs> he uh, he disappeared down a tunnel within the passage. The, where does the tunnel go? <laughs> I, I don't know. Hmm. When so he comes weird. back, does he usually come back to you alone? Yes. Uh, hello, well, Madoc, want to assassinate him with me? Uh, is he not the kin of some of our people? <laughs> I, I'm he's, pretty sure he's worshipping the Dark Master. He's <clears throat> he's coughing. Surely, surely he's made his way to the circle of standing stones on the hills beyond the river. Uh, it is a <clears throat> old place of power. He, he, he was suddenly very scared by something. And I've never heard him prepare an arcane ritual of some sort. I think I think he intends to summon an ancient spirit to get some answers to his dilemma. <laughs> what 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 is his dilemma, my friend? He seeks Elven Stone of Anwin and intends to deliver it to the Dark Master. But this cannot be. He must be stopped at all costs. Uh Okay. At that point, uh, Madoc will look around at the others and say, Elven Stone of what now? He said, it's a very <coughs> ancient, powerful artifact. I can only imagine what the Dark Master could do should he seize the stone for himself. It was said that he was searching the uh, cairns to the south of the village. And if you remember, I think the book that you grabbed, was it not entitled The Elven Stone of Anwin? Or The Stone of Anwin? Um uh- that's the book that Tobold has up top. Is there anything else down below here that's of interest? Uh, there was the shrine made of bones and blood with the silver bowl full of blood in it. You can go drink some of that. The dark Apparently liquid. there's a passage out to the mm. standing stones. Um, 
<laughs> Let's see. Several bizarre implements and scrolls covered in uh, notes are scattered on a great stone table in the center of the room next to a leather-bound tome titled The Stone of Anwin, which Tobolt took. Um, okay. do, do, do. Yeah, he's got the books. There's a whole bunch of stuff here in the book. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, that seems to be it. Um from what you've so, seen here there is a passage leading the opposite direction um from his from his cell like continue on uh like away from this this secret chamber and that's the uh tunnel. The, the tunnel that um nevin said that wolfric used How, is, is nevin uh does he appear well enough to be able to uh climb out that window up there no you guys are gonna have to carry him he's like collapsed on the ground he's tortured uh, quite severely, and he's very malnourished. Is the um, quiet one down here with us, the the rogue? No, he's outside with his book, his newly acquired book. Okay, who's uh, of the? Uh, there's three of us down below now. Yes, more nine. Yeah, and I'm fairly stealthy as Gandrel. Uh, Gandrel. Okay, um, I am well, extremely well, stealthy. Well, can one of you go and tell the others to meet us uh, at? Uh, by the stones, and we'll walk out and try and meet up with you. Uh, take Nevin out through the tunnel, or do you want to bring the rest of them down here, and we'll all go out the tunnel together? If they could, um, perhaps, perhaps we should move together in this the time. Third option is to get Nevin out of here, um, get him to a safe spot, and then go to the stones to his magically uh, sealed tower in the middle of town. Uh, could do that. Devin, can you can you? Uh... Let me go to the town map here. Uh, I'll bring you guys to it as well, just to r remind you, because it has been a while since we've. Yeah. Used this uh, here. I'll... Devin, do you think you could make the trip out, uh, out of the uh, room above? There are guards just outside. We have to be very quiet. Tobald is a survivor. <laughs> Jeff says, uh, "Don't inflate his ego anymore." Uh, Nevin goes, <laughs> "I cannot." cannot walk you'll have to carry me and conceal me through town if uh, you wish to get me out of here are there any rugs down there anything that we could use to help carry him uh there's no rugs down here but there was a rug that normally covers over the trap door that you went down um into the secret chamber there's a rug up in the, the bedroom up above okay why don't we try and use that kind of like make a, a litter and uh, carry him we can slide him uh try and make things quieter does he have any uh, is he very heavy? Uh, no, he's not very heavy at all. He's a little spindly old man. Old okay. man wizard. Madoc, right. between the two of us, I'm sure we can carry a Mornine. If you can do anything to help keep us quiet, that'd be great. So you're Open in Wolfric's Longhouse. Do. You're in Wolfric's Longhouse, which is currently covered in mercenaries. Uh, and there is Nevin's Tower, which you remember was magically sealed last time you were there and you ended up crawling or scaling the outside of the tower, making your way up the window and uh, spilling ink all over a map. Hey, Dustin, what's going on? Thanks for joining us. You just missed one of the devs. We did an hour long uh, Q&A. Map was too. destroyed when we got there. Thanks. Yeah. The, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, yes, there. The, the, remember that the town will like is crawling with uh, mercenaries right now as well. Too bad we got to carry this drunk back to uh, wherever he's going. There was 40. I'm looking at my notes. There was 40 of them that I said roughly in town. And 15 to 20 militia, loyal militiamen that are still about. All right. So we'll go ahead and try and quietly get um, Nevin out the window, I guess. Sure. You want to? Yeah, you can carry him up out of the secret chamber. And uh, back onto the the main floor there, and you want to like what wrap them in a in a in the rug? Well, I was yeah, we and just move them out a window. Use the <laughs> use the rug to kind of um, slide them out without making any noise. Sure, I'll catch them. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> the little halflings <laughs> the window. I'll catch them. I'll catch them. <laughs> one, one of us could go out first, I guess. Or... I mean, his tower's at least right there. Away. I can I can take him and carry him myself. We can get him to me. Yeah, Mornine can hold the window open. We can 
push him out of it. And you said it was only like five him. foot off the ground. Yeah, yeah, it was only five to six feet. It wasn't. Yeah, much. so it's like my chest, you know, just above my about my shoulders, so I can catch him or cradle him down. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> so he's he's like passing in and out of consciousness right now. Like he is so malnourished, so severely tortured, his cuts and gashes and wounds all over him. So you you're you're carrying him up and he's passed out. Like I said though, he is not a he is not a heavy man. Uh so you know, between the three of you you can easily lift him up and out and do you want to roll him into a rug or you just want to like toss him outside in the cold night? He's not dressed very uh well is his uh his whole like upper torso We're not getting is, rid of him as a body yet. Is revealed like it's bare. He's wearing, you know, just like some ragged pants. I think the rug though will go along with for protecting him. He's got bare feet. Well the the only problem is do we want to make any well, okay, we have he's gone and the book is gone, so there'll be evidence either way, so we could take the rug. <laughs> comes Wolfer comes back, what the hell happened to my rug? Of course that rug could be gigantic too. It's like 10 feet by 10 feet. Yeah. It's pretty damn big. It is a big <laughs> rug. You're going to roll them up in there. You guys won't, you know, you won't stand out at all walking through town with a rolled up rug in the middle of the night. We can fold it in half. I'm picturing like some Scooby-Doo episode. Yeah, right. Roll them up. <laughs> <laughs> Roar, Ricky. That's fold it in half. Question. That's five foot by yeah. 10 foot. Wrap it around him. Roar. You know, we've got a uh, Nevin burrito. Rory Reggie. Let's go. Do it. All right. So you want a Nevin burrito? You're going to wrap him up and you're going to carry him through town? I mean, it's the outskirts of town. Back to his tower. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think that's a great plan. I Um, think we got to have our uh, halfling kind of leading the way and tell us when we can go. Sure. Do you want to roll like sneak and be stealthy about this? A little scouting. A little scouting. Here, I'll put us back to. We don't need. There's people got to see the map long enough for Willow Lake. So you want to do a little scouting? You want to do a little sneaky, sneaky? Well, yeah, you're gonna be doing scouting more than anything, and then you're gonna be like, hey, come, come on, guys. Yeah, we're, coast is clear. Coast is clear. Um, is he? Or if they even got him outside yet? I don't know. No. Have you guys? Have you rolled him out of the window and <laughs> dropped him out of the window yet? <laughs> Plop into the on the ground. Sure. Gentle. So they've rolled him up into a carpet, into a rug, and they, they. So Athelstane, does Athelstane is he? He's he knows that you know that Nevin. Well, no, there. I don't know he's in there. I just know they're shoving a carpet out the window now. What are you doing? <laughs> Athelstane, a... it's Nevin. We found him down below. We have a guest. Please help us get him to his tower. <laughs> what are you doing with this blank? I, I I lower it down gently. I'm like, what are you doing to this man? And I, I unroll him out of this thing. <laughs> Because I don't know what they're... I'm like, why do you have this dude wrapped up if he's in... So I, I haven't seen him. And I am shaking my head. <laughs> this is my mentor. So I you see this him. dude now, and I'm like... You and Rob, Rob, I, I take my big cloak off. Because <laughs> according Nevin, to my teacher, I've got one of these big, thick cloaks. Bloodied and beat up, and he is unconscious. He's passed out within this rug. I wrap him... I take him out of the rug and wrap him in my warm cloak. And I will carry him, like, in both arms. There you go. I'm going to make sure he's wrapped up good. Baby Nevin. (laughs) Baby Nevin. (laughs) You swaddle him. And Tobald is just sitting there shaking his head. Come on. Is that the old guy that you gagged and left behind? He thinks he's still conscious. He's like, it's me on the rag and mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Where do we take him? His tower. I, I start heading that way. Well, let me see if there's anybody up there. We're wardens. There's no worry. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm just I'm strolling. I'm cradling, but I'm I'm just making a straight walk towards his tower. Maybe yeah, a little. Stepping. Could be a little bit of a worry. So th- there are there are mercenaries milling about. So you turn a corner, and you can see like a couple of mercenaries uh, walking about and on uh, on patrol. I don't pay him a mind. I keep walking towards the tower. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you you so you've got him. You're cradling him, and you've got him. Okay. So um, yeah. You're just walking amongst the houses, and uh, yeah. Shortest path, whatever it is. I'm 
I'm not like concerned or worried. I, I don't know about that. Nobody's told me about this thing or the uh, horrors down there. Have you? Or did you, Tobol? Did you tell us what all was in there? Yeah, you and Tobol roadside. So yeah. I will. I will go back and like while they were down there doing their thing, Tobol, what would you have revealed to Athelstane about what you saw down there? It was a blasphemous horde. Looks like everything that would be against your managed gods. It was horrible. Do you, do you mention that there was an altar to the Dark Master? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I okay. remember that. Okay, so uh, in my mind, once we get this, when I, there's nobody near us, that, you know, Shadow said we need to rally the, the guard and we need to find out the loyalty of these mercenaries. Do you, do you want to look at the book while you're out there waiting also? Let me ask you that. Let's rewind a bit here. Um, tell all they would, he'll hand it to him and say, would you like to look in this? Now, does this book have like made of skin or anything? Is it like profane? <laughs> it has an eye that's blinking and everything. There's an eye in the middle of it that blinks. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's leather. Barata. And there's like bookmarks sticking Nicole. out of it. Hey, want to see this book I stole? <laughs> it's like Cthulhu. We just put like masks on people. We know they'll cause them to go insane. Hey, I found this book down there. Don't tell them it was found <laughs> on an altar to the Dark Master. Want to look at it? Uh, can I read? I'm assuming I can read. I'm, yeah, I'm you no can read. Lady. It's a leather-bound tome. The title of it is The Stone of Anwin. Um, yeah, so I'll start looking at it while we're waiting. flipping through it, and it looks it's someone's notes. Be careful. Uh, it looks like it's actually Wolfric's notes uh, about his various attempts to unlock the secrets of the Warden's Medallion. And it's his hmm. handwriting and stuff? As far as you know. All right. Do we know about the Warden Medallion? Outside of what? That's what the elves were talking about, right? Uh, does anybody I'm have? Any oh, nobody. Medallion. Does anybody have magical aid? There's a there's a bookmark in there, um, an improvised bookmark, and there's a letter, but it's written in dark speech, and it says none of the PCs can probably understand that without magical aid. Um, so you can't make out what this is. It's written in dark speech. I got a five in Arcana. <laughs> Uh, you could try. Hey, you never know. It could, it could, it could explode. Nope. Oh, it's a partial success. Partial oh. success. Okay. Arcana. Um, you can make out the first part of the message, and it says, "The time is near. Soon you'll be reached by the first servants of our master." And you cannot make out the rest. Anything interesting? Oh, well, hiding his eyes, hands, hands on the uh, This is uh, looks very damning for the Thane. Hold on to this and keep it safe. <laughs> you okay. don't say. Um, and I'll also summarize the book. Like you can, I'll summarize the notes for you. The Stone of Anwin, also known as the Tear of Anwin, or the Elven Stone of Blathmaid, is a relic of a forgotten age, a talisman of incredible power. It appears as a perfectly round jewel the size of a human fist, always uncomfortably cold to the touch. The legends say it's the frozen tear of the true lord of Anwin, the only tear known to have ever left his eye, cried when he heard of Queen Blathmaid's lament for the passing of her mortal beloved. The stone is rumored to possess a multitude of powers, from granting eternal youth and prosperity to bringing the dead back to life. In truth, however, the stone is a key to Anwin, the realm between the mortal world and the land of the dead. It allows the wielder to open a gate and travel through this timeless realm, disappearing without leaving a trace or covering even hundreds of kilometers in a mortal world in the mortal world without the blink of an eye. The more skilled and powerful the wielder is, the larger the gate created by the stone, and the longer their permanence in Anwin, and the more they can carry with them. The initiate of the mystical arts can also use the stone to vanish from for a short time, while the master enchanter could take a whole contingent of soldiers with them and deploy them right in the middle of an enemy kingdom yeah this cannot fall into uh, <laughs> the wrong hands and we must stop this thing he's going to do of something so you have that knowledge and the people who are down there with Nevin have the knowledge of what he told them uh, Wolfric was up to so you can piece those to together um I get a good idea of what he's planning. Okay. 
Okay, but then we back so now we'll we fast forward the <laughs> and you're back to the tossing him out the window with the rug you cradling him in your arms and walking through town are you now still going through there willy-nilly or are you just your chart no, your... i'm still doing what i was doing it's a direct path to get him to this tower uh tobold did you give tobold the book back or are you hanging on to it yeah i told him to keep this safe yeah, back. hide it if we're about to get caught <laughs> here you go you read it <laughs> classic <laughs> tobold <laughs> <laughs> all right tobold uh go ahead and make me so make me a stealth roll here or no you're just going you're just going through athelstane you're not you're not being stealthy yeah, they may be careful. stealthy i'm walking to the tower no no i i'm behind him and i'm still cautious man 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 people make me nervous man people <laughs> they manage people <laughs> All right, you can so still make your, 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 your uh, roll, oh, but um, I rolled some perception here for some uh, some nearby militia men, and they're, uh, woo, look at you with your 143-year-old. So for people in the chat who haven't watched this yet, uh, your rolls can go over 100 and can go below 1. So that's what's happened here. He had a success, and with his bonuses and everything, he, uh, he rolled 143, which is a full success, whereas you noticed uh, Athelstein previously had rolled an 85, and that was only a partial success. So you want to roll as high as you can in this game. Um, so, y yeah, you're, you're blending in with the shadows there, Tobold, and you're behind Athelstane. Athelstane is walking, cradling the body of Nevin in his arms, and uh, a couple of militiamen, or not militiamen, I'm sorry, mercenaries, uh, dressed in their all-black armor. Rolling high stuff here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, high rolling stuff. Uh, they start wandering over uh to you athelstain they're kind of like nudging each other and pointing at you and they're they're making their way over to your direction okay what was their leader's name harkon Harkon. so i'm just keep walking as they get close to me i'm like fetch harkon now no madoc you're behind <laughs> athelstain's got you guys dumped the body out he cradled him and he started walking right away so i'm gonna say the rest <laughs> of you are a little bit ways behind athelstain and so you you witness these mercenaries walk up, uh, and you don't really hear the conversation. So they get, yeah, they're like, "What, Harkon? What do you yeah, what do you got it. there? What do you got there? What is that?" I have an injured man. Fetch your master now. Shouldn't you be taking him to uh, see a doctor? What is uh, this? We, taking him to his home. Fetch your master. To, why do we have to trouble uh, Harkon? What do you got? What, what are you What are you doing? Where was he injured? I'm just walk. I'm ignoring them after I say that. I'm continuing to walk past. Do you? <laughs> All right, all right. So, like, hey, get back here. They shout to you. Uh, the rest of you are now making your way up to where they are. And they're shouting at Athelstein, get back here. Don't walk away from us. We're the I wardens on official out. business. Wardens are no. Why do, you have a Why do you have a body? It's not a body. He's alive. Uh, we'll <laughs> talk to Harkin later. <clears throat> I'll, I'll yell back over my shoulder fetch your master now need what to is, know what, gents what what how does this concern our master this doesn't how does this concern you held. we're being paid to watch this town you're walking through town with a body covered up yeah. And uh, so they don't like what I critical failure. Yeah. Roll again. Roll again there, uh, Athelstain. So one of them walks over to you and he puts his hand on your shoulder and he spins you around. He goes, no, no, no. You stay here and you can answer our questions. Where are you going? I'm going to that tower there. Fuck off. Who is, <laughs> who is this man? <laughs> We're gonna have a throwdown in town here with some mercenaries. There's forty of them. I was like, "Hold on, just a moment." And I'm like, I uh, wave everybody else over. Oh, now you want us to come over? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out uh, Nevin to you. I'm like, get him to his tower, and I pull my sword. <laughs> okay. Uh... So you're challenging these these mercenaries in town. There will be blood. That's right, Fawn. Uh, oh, wow. That's your not, master. I did not expect you to do that. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> and there's only two of them. Yeah, 
Yeah, but still, you're in the middle of town, and there's 40 of them. I'm going to walk in between them, Matt. I'm going to put my back to Athelstain, look at the mercenaries, and say, uh, same team, guys. We're we're working together here. We're just trying to sort out what happened to this guy. Uh, We found him not 20 minutes ago. That's why I told you to fetch your master, because there's information. Unless you serve the Dark Master himself, fetch Harkin. They say, put your sword away, there's going to be trouble. You're right, there will be trouble. Fetch your master. Yeah, we need to discuss uh, what is the uh, the Thane's name. I can't remember it right now. Wolfric. Wolfric. We need to discuss the Thane Wolfric with uh, Harkonnen or whatever his name is. Harkin. Bear with me. Um... How far are we from um, Neville's tower? I'd say you're three quarters of the way to the tower through town. All right, well, uh, is he? He's asleep, right? Uh, he's passed out, and uh, he was just handed over to you. Do we yeah, know how to open? Can we get him through the tower without him being conscious? No. If you remember, uh, the door is magically sealed. Okay. So um, I'm yeah, at this point. Uh, Madoc's going to just continue to, to to walk him to the tower, and. Uh, um, he's got that bag of tricks. Uh, I'm not sure how it works, but I'm thinking one of the things he has in there is smelling salts. So when he gets to the tower, he's gonna cr- he's gonna crack the smelling salts, and um, I thought he was just gonna blow in his face because dwarven breath should do it too. T- and, uh, are you continuing on with them as well? I have pulled my my sling out, and <laughs> I um, am sticking to the shadow. With the oh yeah, yeah. I think you Marnie, have we got a halfling with a sling here, guys. Mornine will continue on to the tower <laughs> with with Nevin. She wants to see him safely there. All right. Well, we're I'm making sure that's safely there. Too. We're going to do anything. Sure. I'm trying to keep time. Get, give y'all time to get to there, <laughs> and I need Harkin also. You guys are. Um, let's switch this over. Uh, so here's just like a, an impromptu battle map that we've got going on because. Uh, things are getting heated, and these mercenaries do not like the directions to take. So we've got Athelstain and Gandril are standing there, and the rest are carrying on with Nevin. And they're like, uh, they, they've they drawn their, their swords, their long swords, and they say, you're coming with us now. Ooh. We're putting you in, the, you're going to the stockades. Uh, no, I will not be going. You will Warden bring. Warden or no warden, you're coming now. with us, and they've got their swords drawn. Bring your master. I'm losing a stone. I'm losing a stone. You're, you're firing? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Once they pull stones on my, my we want him. <laughs> See, this is nighttime too, correct? It yes. is nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Throw a stone. You guys. You guys. That's what I had to say. here in five minutes. We'll sell you thought it was going to be three sessions. It's going to be one session. So, <laughs> do your sling. Okay. Woo. What's the damage type on this? Woo. Missile impact. We're we're going to the tables. I'm getting the tables out. I'm on this tiny computer. Right, there we are. I just had to fudge that roll on charisma. God damn it! All right, missile weapons attack. Roll high, my friend. Roll high. All right, I have to remember how to do this. Take his eye out. There should be a, right. a tab on the second page, it's, and a, you should have it programmed in there. It's in there on the missile. So you I know, I could even I could press it for you if you want, and you could let me. Uh... You better, oh, I found you might want to make sure his modifiers are correctly on the front front page because they'll take effect. Oh, shooting range. What what range would I be at? Uh, you'll be whatever your. I think it's short range is your. Is your yeah. what you want to be? You were in the shadows, so I'll, I'll give it to you. You were in I the shadows. I think this character sheet is still set up to calculate versus their armor class on based off. Yeah, your what's their defense? Their defense is okay, target defense. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Their defense is mercenary. Typical mercenary defense of twenty five. Oh. Okay. Submit. Oh, let me click over here. Critical Results of 98, impact. so missile modifier 50. Result of 98. Yeah, you need to roll on this. Now we gotta go, to, yeah, there's another 
it's another chart, right? That he needs yeah, to roll the on the table. The table, and you type in ninety-eight. <laughs> Plus any programmed in with? No, it's. I left the buttons off of it so far. But the tables uh, should be good. They're just the five column tables instead of the new four column tables, which I don't know how different they are. I haven't compared them. That they're way. wearing they're wearing boiled leather, so uh, that's. I think that's hard. Wait, I hit, hit ninety eight. I typed ninety eight. So that is nine sup. <laughs> that's nine damage and superior critical. Ooh. So you or got superficial, a, super, superficial, superficial critical. Yeah, it's like oh, the lowest level. Superficial is a little different than super, oh, so right. impact. You go from superior to superficial. Impact yeah. critical strikes. So you got like you got to you got to roll again. Oh, right, superficial. Right, he has to roll again, uh, Wes, on another. You'll have to roll on the impact critical table. Yeah, I've got it here in front of me. I'm looking at it. So you roll, and I'll 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 give you your result. All right. Do I get any bonus to the D100 roll? Uh, it would be classified like, I don't think, it, is it during versus the type of armor they're wearing? Or the yeah. weapon type? I don't know that they're, I can't remember the critical modifiers. Boiled leather. Looking through my quick start rules. Yeah, I'm going through mine as well right now. I did not expect you to do this this week, uh, but hey, that's what players do. <laughs> uh... They drew swords on another warden. The Drew Steel. Critical strikes, uh, superficial. Did you find it there? It's on table, or page 64 is the, I don't see the, I thought there was a modifiers table for criticals, but I'm not seeing it now. Maybe just. Let's roll it, because you can go high, right? It can go up over 100 as Oh, well. I see, yeah. The, if, if it was a higher level critical, then it would get a bonus to the roll. Gotcha. But it's just going to be a straight up 100. So superficial doesn't get anything. Yeah. Okay, roll me a D100 and let's see what we get. 85. Well done, my friend. Well <laughs> done. Good roll. So 85, impact critical. You got Blow Smash's weapon hand. Nice. Uh, That's perfect. Plus eight hits. Target stunned. Drops weapon. Minus 20 to activity. So plus eight hits. Uh, what did you get for the base damage? What was it that you had? 13, I said? Nine. 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 Plus eight. Somebody has a smash thing. 17, and I don't have anywhere to track his modifiers yet, but you're going to have to remember you're minus 20. Yeah, minus 20 for this guy. Woo. The new sheet might have that. <laughs> the guy with the minus 20 mod, mm -hmm. I'm going to put um, a dot on him. And he, he got uh, the sword. He's stunned, too. He is stunned. And you did how much damage? I'm sorry? 19? Uh, 17 weird. total. It was nine and eight. All right. So he's 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 hurt, but he's he's not he's not badly injured. All of a sudden this this stone flies from the shadows, hits him in his weapon hand, he drops his long sword, and he clenches his hand and he's he's like frozen with pain. Ah Someone just attacked me! Get back up! Get them! He shouts out. Can you shout while stunned? I don't... <laughs> yeah. Oh, look Good at you. Question. Good question. That is an accurate question. Let's go to the books and you find can shout it. in pain. You guys, can you shout when you're That was stunned? a perfect hit. That was so perfect to make him drop his phone. Uh, okay, yeah, straight well, stuff. Conditions, I think, is right after the criticals. Kid. Conditions. Do you find it? Dying, weary, injury. Stun characters can only parry with up to half the CMB. Whatever weapon they're using is. Uh, it doesn't say whether or not they can't talk. I I know that they have to make a roll, and on their before their turn starts, the whole make sure they can do anything after after yeah. they've been stunned. Yep. 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 Wow. Stunned character cannot take full actions, but can still defend himself, using up to half their CMB to parry. Attacks against stunned characters gain a plus 20 situational bonus. Characters suffering from the stunned condition at the beginning of the assessment phase of the round stop being stunned at the end of the other action phase, unless they are stunned again during the course of the same round of combat. So it does end. He's stunned for a full round. 
Um, so yeah, that basically says like if he's got a quick action, he can use it at the end. Yeah. Of the face, so he's not completely stun locked. So yeah, he's like, ah, I'm getting us help, get help. We're under attack. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm gonna. Can I raise my hands? I, I'm the only one without a sword pulled here. Can I raise my hand? And say, whoa, guys, let's take a step back here. Nobody needs to die tonight. Sure. Do you want to make a roll? Sure. What do you want me to roll? I guess it's it comes down to are you deceiving or are you yeah, being uh, truthful or using your charisma? Well, nobody or whatever. does have to die tonight. My charisma is terrible, though. So yeah, let's roll that. Deceiving or well, there's no. Oh yeah, there's. I can try and I'll try and help you on your charisma roll. Morning's gonna Morning's gonna start heading back after they start shouting. Well, I'm gonna shout from the background when he starts shouting. He's like, "Please stop this! We're just trying to save this old man." I'll There's no the, need for any bloodshed. Just let I'll us just assist a, him. Just a regular charisma roll. Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an assist from from Mornine. Let me see how good my assist can be. But I'm also whoa 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 you're getting a little ahead of yourself there, Gandril. I'm also going to I'm gonna was give, I sorry. I'm gonna give you a modifier here because the odds yeah. are stacked against you. Um, combat has started, and they're shouting for help. Um, so it's not looking good for you guys. It's going to be a little bit tougher. Bear with me. Yeah. I'm just looking at a character sheet here for the modifiers. It's not on mine for whatever reason. So you're getting help from Mornine, but it is well, also uh, going to be a hard, hard skill. It'll be modifier. one of those things where I have to roll, too, to see if I can actually assist. Yeah, so go ahead. Very Mornine. hard? Yeah, it's going to be hard. And go ahead and you roll. Okay. Do you want me to re-roll, Matt? You will, yeah, but bear, hold on. More nines rolling first. And not doing well. A zero on the assist. Did you roll? Yep. I don't uh, see anything. I'm okay, so I had 3D dice enabled, and that prevents uh, the roll from showing. I rolled a, a total of 67. Reroll so we can see it. Okay, let me uh, click off these dice. Otherwise, the people watching and, and I can't see I your rolls. Well, I get a bo I get a uh, bogey here. Let's see. Where's you the bogey? You get a bogey. Do 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 do. Oh well, those three D okay. dice are in your favor, and you got a success. Yeah. You rolled one hundred and fourteen. Assist bonus of plus ten, so you get a plus ten, but it's also very hard, which is I or a heart. I said, which was a minus twenty, wasn't it? Yeah. So he can put minus 20 and then assist of plus 10 on his roll. Okay, do it that way. Let's put uh, Wes's character sheet to the test here. So you're going to put that in, plug that in your character sheet? So help sheet. plus 10? Yep. yep. But the difficulty is going to be minus 20 or whatever. And you're going to roll again, Gandril. 65. So you still failed. <laughs> you're like, whoa, hey! We don't, there's no need for bloodshed. And uh, yeah, the guy's just like... He's holding his hand. He's like, Bloodshed, you started this. You started this. I'm not even holding a weapon. I started it. Hey, um, Matt, is it possible uh, for Madoc to get a shot from his crossbow if he, if he takes care of it? Well, we're into aim? combat now. After that, we got one free shot. Uh, okay. And aren't you carrying <laughs> Nevin? Well, I can set him down for a moment. <laughs> he just want to drop him. Give him to just, the tower. Just, well, I just, you know, was wondering. You're carrying the old man. Mornine is shouting. <laughs> Tobold is scurrying next to you. Well, it's, actually, Tobold was in the shadows and let loose a... Uh, and he does not scurry. He does not... <laughs> oh, man. We're getting close to the end of our session here because we're only doing two I'm... hours. Uh, and we've got combat going on in the middle of Whittle Lake. This won't last. Not really. Just one, one person was disarmed, and he doesn't know where he came from. <laughs> So he's shouting for backup. Um, and Gandril was unsuccessful in... Um, De-escalation. De Failure. So we're going to enter some combat here. We're going to enter initiative. <laughs> if you all remember how that goes. I don't. Neither do I. I think it's just declared, right? Yeah, it is. 
so we don't even need it we don't need a turn order for now well actually we need a turn order to declare fast actions and slow actions right and who's doing what and where they go on the order so make sure you guys have your cheat sheets handy here so combat is broken down into like phases so phase one is the tactical round round is a short time interval during which a series of tactical actions can take uh, take place during combat so the tactical round sequence uh first is the assessment phase you roll perception to assess if needed uh we don't really need that here next is the action declaration phase you declare actions and targets for the current round then is the move and maneuver phase after that is the spell phase a you cast any prepared or instant spells after that is ranged phase a loaded missile and thrown weapon <laughs> attacks are resolved after that is the melee phase, and that goes from longest weapons, long weapons, short weapons, to hand weapons. Range phase B, other we missile weapon attacks that weren't fired in range phase A. Spell phase B, cast unprepared or improvised spells, and then other actions phase. So, you get one full round action and one free action or one full round action and one half action so a full action is making a melee or ranged attack gets casting a spell moving at full movement speed uh, a half action is reading an item or drawing a weapon knocking an arrow or taking aim moving to engage a foe in melee and free actions are talking singing chanting making assessment rolls and declaring actions so we are all in the action declaration phase what does everybody want to do who is taking part in this I'm going to smack the other dude in the face with the butt of my axe. The, the one who's not stunned? Him. Yeah, the one that's not stunned. I'm not trying to kill him, but I'm trying to put him down. Okay. Uh, so what's this? What's the... Um, what's your weapon? Long? Short? Uh, hand weapon? It's a, length is long. Okay. Skill, polearm, two-handed. I said sword, but it's my axe. Okay. This guy's got a long sword. Um... Gandril, what are you doing? I guess I'll pull out my sword. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll pull out my sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, the escalation failed. But and what is yours? Long, short, hand. Long sword. Okay. Um, Tobold, you are in the shadows. Are you yep. Go going to, to be uh, loading your missile weapon and attacking? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes. Well, it says reload. I guess. Yeah, I guess you have to reload, reload, and then you'll be in ranged phase B. You won't be in ranged uh, phase A because your your weapon is not loaded. Okay. Okay. So you go um, down. I can do a quick reload. Yeah, that puts the yeah, half action. Okay. Okay, uh, so we've got more nine who stopped and yelled back, and we've got um, Mo Moda Madoc who um, who's carrying Nevin towards the tower. What do, what okay. do the two of you want to do? Go ahead, Mordai. Uh, more nine's going to begin casting a spell. Okay, uh, gotcha. So you're going to be in spell phase B, or is it an instant? No, it's going to be, I will be casting in phase B, because I'll be chanting during phase A and then casting in B, I believe. Uh, and Madoc. That's a preparation. Madoc Actually, I'm going to be, sorry, I'm going to be prepping for a full round. Oh, okay, so you won't be doing anything this round. No, except okay. chanting. Madoc will gently set Nevin down, um, turn... <laughs> with his battle axe and shield and head as far as he can to a flanking position here. Okay. Well, we don't, okay. Well, hold on. We're not moving yet. We're not in that phase. Okay, so you're, so you uh, what's this, what's the length of your weapon? Um, it's long. Okay. So everybody is long. So if we remember, this all plays out at the same time. So like, even if you roll to hit someone, it doesn't matter what order it happens in. It all happens simultaneous. So this is going to be interesting. Um, okay. And so 
Fast. Everybody has declared their actions. So now it is the move and maneuver phase. Move up to full move rate or double move rate if sprinting and perform any move skill rolls. So who is moving where? I'm just taking a step up to hit the dude. So He's stunned. Right, but I can swing it at the dude below, right? Yeah, this guy steps forward. Maydoc, you want to do your move? What's your what's your movement rate? What's your movement? Um, these these squares are accurate where you're at, so you can move squares. Right, I'm just looking where where it calls out movement rate. <laughs> Ask the guy who made the character sheet. <laughs> hey Wes, where's the, where's the movement rate on this thing? Movement rate? Oh, yeah. the, it's a uh, by the hit points on the stat page. Okay. So I think it's like on the bottom right hand corner of the care the first page. Oh, okay, so fifteen are these five foot squares? Yeah. All right, so a full how how many squares can I he move? I think it's fifteen meters. I don't. I... Okay, how many squares can he move in a full movement? Um, five. Like okay. you can move fifteen, so you can move three. Uh, okay, and so if he hustles, he can or he can double that. Is that right? Yes. That's if right, he's, so, you sprint, you move at uh, double your movement rate, but that means that's your your full action. Okay, well, I don't think he'll be getting anywhere anyway, so uh, that gives him six squares, right? Yep. One, two, three, four, uh, five, and six. And I'm going to say your free action was gently placing Nevin in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, with uh, one other quick question, with with the reach of the weapon, would I attack across that empty square to this guy? What's your reach? What, what, I thought you were a long it's, weapon. It is. Uh, I believe it's longest weapons would have reach, like a halberd or something. I could be wrong. It's been a while since we've done this. Uh, I think it's for who goes first. Yeah, I think yeah it's it's, it's based off speed is what like long and all that is. Oh, oh, okay. So it's uh, so he would have to be. Uh, standing next to him to attack him? Yes. Okay. Uh, but he could, as part of his next turn, he could step up and swing, right? He could, or he could end your turn next to him. Yeah, you could have already been right next to him. Okay. All right. Well, he'll, he'll do that then. He'll end his turn next to him. Yeah, a halberd is longest. I'm just looking at all the different uh, weapons here. That's the only one that's listed as longest. And that would go the first. That would go the fastest out of all of the weapons. Oh, a polearm or a halberd. But uh, you have what? Just a, a battle axe or an axe? Battle axe. Yep. Yeah, so it's long. Okay. <clears throat> so this all plays out simultaneously. Let me go back to my cheat sheet for the order of combat. I thought we were going to have combat tonight, but not like this. Uh, the move and maneuver phase is well, done. planning on it either, but... So, spell phase A, we have no spells that are going off. Ranged phase A, we have no ranged spells that are going off. So we are entering melee phase, and everybody has a long weapon. So that means Athelstane, Gandrel, and Merc B, we will call him, the one who is not stunned and doesn't have his weapon dropped, uh, are all acting at the same time. So it doesn't matter who rolls first, doesn't matter any of that because it's all happening simultaneously simultaneously the way this works so i will start with you athelstein you can roll first and we'll go to gandril and i'll roll my guy last that's fine it's all gonna happen okay. at the same time so and what's his defense his defense was 24 me, it was a 25 he's wearing leather armor and has better defense in my plate mill apparently <laughs> hey man, I'm using I'm using the stats in the uh in the adventure provided to me. So uh yeah. So, critical failure. Oh, fucking dice fuck me. <laughs> Roll again. <laughs> All right, we got to go to the critical you failure hit table the, now. You actually want to hit the critical failure on the yeah. in the in the hit, chat there and then type in the number 65. Okay. Hit hit the word critical and failure. And it'll calculate it all for you. Minus I was just at the critical failure table and now I got to find it again. I can't wait to have the DM screen in front of me when it's released. Or a complete DM. It's the second time the dice don't be nice. Or a complete character sheet. Or a complete character sheet made by uh, Wes himself. <laughs> All right, critical failure. Bear with me as I find this. If anybody finds it first, let me know. Shut it out. 
as I page. I want to guess 67. I'm on 62 and I'm going up. Well, the results total of negative 28. Weapon fumbles, modifiers, melee and range fumbles. Page there we go. 64. Thank you. Oh, I'm on page 48. We're using different quick starts. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think um, we're moving. Page, or you rolled a 65. No, result of minus 28, or no, 65 total? Or what's your what's your total? It should be negative 28, shouldn't it? Because I rolled a 65. Then when I rolled the critical, it says result of negative 28. Yep, so he rolled a 60 or he rolled a uh, five previously and then since it was a critical failure he's open under 100 it again so he rolled a 93 the second time taking him to a total of negative 28 because it's possible to succeed even when you critical failure yeah right? you so uh, yeah I'm looking at the table because it goes up to plus 151 right yeah huh which doesn't make sense because the higher you go, the oh no, that's his actual time. attack roll. That's not his critical fumble. It's not his actual fumble. Roll. Oh, that's, well, we need that's we his need actual a attack roll. We need a fumble. That's, roll. You said you said click the critical failure roll and yeah. enter the number. That's what I did. That's what the negative twenty eight is. Just because it's possible to still succeed if you rolled like a one, you would still succeed. All right, so go ahead and roll me a d one hundred. And. Now oh, you yeah, rolled the ninety-six. Yeah, I'm gonna give you your your modifier. Sorry, your modifier long edged edge weapon is what you're using. It's a month. It's a plus twenty. Oh, oh. one sixteen. Even better. What did you get total? One sixteen. One sixteen. Character must assess or be stunned next round and gets to choose one of the following: drops their weapon, takes a light critical strike of the appropriate type on himself inflicts a superficial critical strike upon a nearby ally if applicable which it is <clears throat> and what's the assess what's that that's going to be a Just, button on your character sheet um I don't, I don't know that there is a button for it well i believe it is i was looking at this before the is it a, it's a toughness save is it not it could be uh it's a toughness save we're going with um, which is again on the bottom right hand of your character sheet. Toughness save. You rolled a sixty-four. So you're good on that. You're not stunned, but you have to choose whether you want to drop your weapon, take a light critical strike on yourself. You hurt yourself, or how many options are there? There's three. Or inflict a roll. superficial critical strike. Oh, it's a perception strike. skill roll. <clears throat> it's a perception. Yeah, assess as a perception. Oh, okay. Reroll. It's like you keep your wits about your kind of thing, right? Keep, make your make your perception. Oh, failure. All right, you're stunned. You're stunned so you and you either drop pick. your weapon, take a light critical strike on yourself, or inflict a superficial critical strike There's upon, three. upon your ally. It'll be Gandril. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the dice decide. I'm I feel gonna like I'm getting three. cut. I'm rolling a D three to see what happens. <laughs> So second choice. Um, you're going to take a light critical strike of the appropriate type on yourself. Okay. To the next table. <clears throat> so a light critical strike with an edged weapon. And a light a light is a plus ten bonus. What um Girl. what type of armor are you wearing? Light. Oh wow! You gotta, so you take ten damage, and you said it's a plus ten bonus on the uh, on the critical table. Yeah, for a light critical. So it's a it's a cut weapon that you're using. Is that correct, or is it a yes. piercer? It's a cut. Piercer. Cut. All right. So roll and uh, put a plus ten on there for your modifier. Roll a d100. Just the 100 plus 10. Damn it. It's not so bad. Um, minor forearm cut, plus four hits, and one bleed. And the target stunts. You're already stunned. 
You take four more damage and you gain one bleed. So what happens? Because I was trying. I said I was going to hit him with the butt of my axe. So as I go across, I catch myself with the blade because I'm not used to using it that way. But I wasn't trying to kill the dude. So you're st- you. I'm gonna. So you drop your weapon and you drop to the ground. I don't know. You accidentally hit yourself in the head and you're bleeding. I don't know. Um. I thought I hit myself in the forearm. Sure. Oh yeah, you hit yourself in the forearm. <clears throat> right. I'm coming across like this. I wow. I cut the blade across my forearm. I should just swing instead of trying to pummel him. What did Nick say? Memorable situations. This is definitely memorable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you guys. We're going to end up in the stockades tonight. Um, Gandril, you just watched Athelstain try to... Um, try to to hit this guy with the butt of his blade. Stop or we'll kill ourselves. Hit himself in the <laughs> forearm, drop his weapon, and drop to the ground, and he's now bleeding. Yeah, I guess I'm uh, I'm attacking with my sword here. Lethally or non-lethally? Let's go with non-lethally. Um, can I can I pummel him in the face? Yeah, you can try that. Any differences to the roll? Uh, it's just going to be his defense, which was a uh, fifty. I said 25. no. Uh, twenty-five. Thank you. So, uh, for your bleed, Athelstain, a uh, character suffering from bleeding loses a certain number of hit points each round until the bleeding is stopped, so it's one. Uh, the amount of hit points lost due to bleeding from different wounds is cumulative. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So, yeah, and there's three severities, light bleeding, severe bleeding, and uh, yeah, you're fine. You're losing one hit point every round. Okay, so you hit with a 102. And I'm attacking the unarmed guy, of course, because that's who's in front of me. Uh, no, the other so guy's just... over there. You're attacking the armed guy. Oh, my bad. All right. I'm just, uh, mashing him in the face as hard as I can All with right. the pommel of my sword. My this is where I was like, oh, I could really use a DM screen when I run this, because I'm going back and forth in the PDF between tables. Edge weapon, you rolled 102? Uh, f- 11 damage. And it's also a superficial wound. So 11 damage to him to start. And we said it was, what, a plus... T- uh, he has a 10 modifier? Superficial is zero. Superficial is zero. So roll me a d100 again. Break his nose! 54. <laughs> minor chest wound, plus three to hits, another three hit points. And he's got one bleed and minus five to all activities. <laughs> <laughs> so you like hit him with the butt of your sword in his chest <clears throat> so remember he's rolling now without those minuses because you guys are all acting at the exact same moment so I'm not taking into account the minus fives and things like that in his roll um, he was targeting you Athelstain because you're the mouthy one who would not listen What? Uh, what's your defense According to this, 24 with my plate armor. 24. That sounds a little low. I'm 35 with soft leather and a shield. That does sound low. Yeah, it just, at the bottom it says defense, 25, 49 if I have my shield out. Uh, let's take a look at the – there's a table here for that. Imagine that. There's a table. Um, there's a table for that. Let's uh, uh what's a CMB? CMB they're showing SW to defense is 30. Oh, plus 70. Let me find that. Okay. Um, we'll roll this plus 70. And what was your defense? I'm sorry. Uh what I have written down is 24, but like I say, I don't know if that's You're correct. A fighter or not. too, right? Yeah, I'm a fighter wearing plate mail or breastplate. Type plate. Oh, that's sick. Sick digital plate. I got yeah, a full right? also. Well, he rolled a 64 total with his sword, which I don't think is going to do anything. Let me go to my table. Once I so I rolled an 88, and I, I took 24 off of that. Maybe it's easy to hit you, but it doesn't do any damage. Yes. Plate plate is really low numbers. Like so like swords are gonna do like one or two damage to it if you roll low. 
Or so zero. he doesn't he doesn't even hit you. He swings at you and you've dropped to the ground stunned and he misses and that's when Gandril boom catches okay. him with his with the butt of his sword. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Woo, combat. I'm getting back into it now. I did study it earlier today. I was like, oh, we'll see if this plays out today. Uh, ranged phase B now takes effect. So that is our friend Tobald, who has loaded another stone. Is he there? Gia? Can you guys hear me? There we there go. We are. can hear you. All right. So, I'm going to... his armor is a 25. Defense is a 25. Okay, here we go. So he winds up, he's smiling because he knows he can't be seen. Roll high, my friend. Roll high. Nice. 109 impact. Woo! Nicely done. Ooh, Missile weapons. Impact. 109. You're rolling really good. Uh... 12 damage. Which one are you rolling at? The one that's attacking, the one that's not stunned? The one, yeah, not stunned there. And uh, it is a it is a light wound. It is not a superficial. So what does he get Ooh. for a light wound, Wes? Uh, plus 10. Plus 10. So roll me a D100 with plus 10, please. Ninety-seven. Nice. Abdomen strike. <laughs> Good shot. Target is Good doubled shot. over in pain, stunned, and plus twelve hits. Whoa. Okay, this guy's in pretty rough shape after. Uh... Let's see this. I'm gonna try this on you guys. Everybody started using slings. Can you guys <laughs> see? Can you see a bar above his head now? That's his hit points. You see the bar is like. Over halfway gone. Are you able to see that above his head? Uh, the tiny green one. Yeah. Yeah. He's zooming in yeah. bigger. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how damaged he is. I gotta start using those little bars so people. There can you see can them. see it better. There. Uh, gives you an idea of how damaged he is. He is doubled over in pain. Um, abdomen hit. Wow, look at you. Target's double over. Stunned. Tw plus twelve hits. Uh, if no rigid armor, oh, bruised wow. muscles. Uh, and plus fifteen hits and minus forty to activities. Ooh. Wow. Is that on top of his other minus five? Yeah, it stacks, man. But uh, rigid armor. I don't think it was his armor rigid. It's rough. Uh, it's boiled leather. Boiled leather. I don't think it's going to be rigid, but uh, bear with me. Somebody has the armors in front of them. So your there defense is equal to your swiftness score, or zero, whichever is higher. And plate or half plate, which is listed in this quick start rules, is plus 20 max. Swiftness to defense. Uh, no, it's boiled leather, so it's not rigid. Interesting. Okay, so he's going to be taking more damage. And he's going to be uh, he's gonna be a minus 40, so it stacks on top of that minus 20. So he's a minus 60 to everything. Um... Maths. Yay, maths. So how much extra damage you take? Holy crap. Uh abdomen strike. On my on my 15 Abdom. more. So he's doubled over in pain. He's throwing up and he's almost passing out. And the other guy's stunned. He's yelling, guards, guards, we're under attack. <coughs> Woo. Um, spell phase B. We don't have any spells that are going off this round. Other actions phase. There are no other actions. That takes us to the top of the next round of combat. Wouldn't Mornane's spell going off on B? No, not this round. No, it's going off on A. Okay. We're kind of past the point of stopping. Uh, I do have to stop at a reasonable time because I'm starting a new job tomorrow and I can't go too late. Congrats. Thank you. Sorry, boss. I was playing D and D last night. Yeah, time right. So, um, <laughs> I think we're gonna leave off here. Unfortunately, it's it's a bit of a we're in the middle of combat, but I can't go too too late. And this combat's gonna go on for at least another twenty more minutes, if not more, the way things are playing out. Um, Sorry, guys. That was not my intention. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the cause was noble. 
Well, I gotta do some planning for next time. This is going way off target. Um, I just wanted to get him to his tower and then go talk to Harkin. That's all I wanted. Right. To do. Oh, I forgot to mention the top of the show. Okay, so thank you so much to Nick for joining us tonight and doing an impromptu Q&A. That was awesome to have him here and answering questions for us and the folks in the chat. Uh, we're going to be back next Sunday, same time, with the next part of this adventure. And uh, Tuesday night, we're doing uh, the final act of Alien, Chariot of the Gods, at uh, 9 o'clock Central Time. On Better the see some death going on. Yeah, we'll, we'll... I'm going to have to tune in for that one. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. And uh, Friday night, we're continuing on with the second part of Enemy Within using Zweihander. So two of you are in that. Oak and uh, Mike are playing within that ongoing Enemy Within campaign. And so I we're, think Saturday we're on for Friday? Night, that's this Friday. I think Saturday night, we're going to do another Mutineer Zero. We're coming back with Mutineer Zero on Saturday night at 8.30 p.m., Central Standard Time. So busy week for games, lots going on. Uh, I forgot to mention at the top of the chat or at the top of the show, we also have a new sponsor. We are now with uh, Found Familiar Coffee, who does um, D and D and tabletop themed coffee. If you follow the link down in the chat, that'll take you to our affiliate. That's our affiliate link. If you use the code Grim and Perilous, it's down there exactly how it's spelt. You'll get ten percent off your order. So check it out. They have all kinds of cool tabletop RPG themed coffee. And it also helps out the channel when you use that link and you buy coffee via it. And you get a bit of a discount. So uh, please check them out. And uh, yeah, that was crazy. That was a good, that was fun. I did not expect that. But hey, that's what happens when you do role playing games. You never, you never know what the players are going to do. And uh, we're going to pick this up next week, Sunday in the middle of combat. So uh, thank you to the players for playing thank you to everybody who joined us thank you for the new follow from uh, morgan malak and fawn Sater for gifting morgan malak a sub so Go back uh, to kickstarter you, you missed the link there's the link yet again and go back to Kickstarter for Against the Dark Master here let's see do I still have a copy paste there we go there's the link for Against the Dark Master go back them uh, go support this game it's great it's a lot of fun and it's really 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 good people behind this project as well um, so thank you everybody have a good night we'll see you on Tuesday for the finale of mm. Alien Chariot of the Gods not everyone have good a good night night, night everybody Bye. Well, I can't do it.